Kentucky Governor William Goble was shot after saying his enemy had gonorrhea. William Goble was only governor of Kentucky for four days, but he remains the only governor in American history to die in office from an assassin's bullet. Goble wasn't shy about attacking his enemies. He once publicly said one rival had the face of a cancerous beef steak and called another colonel. John Gonorrhea Sanford. He later shot Sanford in the head and killed him. Goble ran for governor in 1899, and after an accusation of election fraud against his rival, the legislature named Goble governor. However, the day before he was officially declared the winner, Goble was shot on the steps of the Capitol building. Goble lived another four days until his lungs filled with blood and he died. The crime is still unsolved. Serbia's first democratically elected prime minister was shot in public. Serbian Prime Minister Zoran Jinjic helped topple dictator Slobodan Milosevic in 2000. Jinjic later became Serbia's first democratically elected prime minister, pushing through reforms to integrate the country with Europe. Unfortunately, the prime minister was shot twice in the stomach on March 12, 2003, just outside the main government building in Belgrade. He died only hours later. Who was behind the murder? Evidence pointed to organized crime, which the government was trying to stamp out. One of the main suspects was part of the military. In attempting to find the murderer, the Serbian police detailed over 11,000 people. Gangrene killed President McKinley after an anarchist shot him. President William McKinley, a stern governor of Ohio, who led America into war against European powers, was called an imperialist by his enemies. He seized Puerto Rico, the Philippines, and Guam after the Spanish-American War and sent American troops to China to pursue his open-door policy. But in 1901, an anarchist shot and killed the president. Unemployed mill worker Leon Cizalgos hid in the crowd waiting to meet McKinley after a speech. He disguised his gun by wrapping his entire hand in bandages. The president stepped up to shake his hand. Ironically, most thought McKinley would recover. Vice President Teddy Roosevelt was so certain that after rushing to the hospital, he left with his family on vacation. But McKinley's Secretary of State, John Hay, was certain the man would die. Hay knew from experience he had been personal secretary to Abraham Lincoln and a personal friend of James Garfield, the only two presidents killed in office before McKinley's assassination. McKinley died of gangrene eight days later, and Teddy Roosevelt was sworn into office as the next president. Stalin chased Leon Trotsky to Mexico City, where an assassin put an axe through his head. Communist revolutionary Leon Trotsky might have been Vladimir Lenin's right-hand man, but when Joseph Stalin emerged as Lenin's successor, Trotsky found himself in a dangerous power struggle. Trotsky had been the first leader of the Red Army, but after Lenin's death in 1924, Trotsky traveled the world, publicly criticizing Stalin and the Soviet government. Trotsky eventually settled in Mexico City. Stalin named him an enemy of the people in the 1930s, and in 1940 he sent an assassin after Trotsky. The assassin used a mountaineering ice axe to puncture Trotsky's skull, killing him without question. Spanish Prime Minister Luis Carrero Blanco was blown five stories into the air. Luis Carrero Blanco came to power in Spain in 1973, after military dictator Francisco Franco stepped down from the office. 
But Carrero Blanco had only been in power for six months when the Basque separatist group ETA carried out Operation Over. The group plotted to plant explosives under a road in Madrid, and when Carrero Blanco's car drove over the bomb, it exploded. The armored limousine didn't stand a chance. It was blown five stories into the air, flying over the top of a church to land on a second-story terrace. Carrero Blanco died, and earned the derisive nickname Spain's first astronaut. Philip Roman II of Macedon was stabbed by a scorned male lover. Alexander the Great might never have left Macedonia if his father, Philip Roman II, had not been assassinated in 336 BC. Shockingly enough, the assassin was his own bodyguard and former lover Pausanias. According to ancient historians, including Diodorus of Sicily, Philip was murdered because of a scorned lover. Pausanias watched as Philip's eye wandered to younger lovers, who he called effeminate whores. The vicious rumors soon reached Italus, Philip's general, who decided that Pausanias needed to be put in his place. So Italus invited Pausanias to dinner, got him drunk, and handed his body over to his stablemen to abuse sexually in drunken rape. The rape so enraged Pausanias that he began plotting to assassinate Philip for allowing it. Pausanias stabbed Philip to death outside of the theater and was himself killed while trying to flee. Alexander the Great became king at only 20 years old, and the rest is history. Swiss politician George Genet was murdered by an axe-wielding bear man. Swiss politician George Genet was murdered by an axe-wielding bear man. Congressman Leo Bryan was assassinated at the Jonestown Massacre. Congressman Leo Bryan was assassinated at the Jonestown Massacre. Governor Charles Bent was scalped for betraying his friends. Governor Charles Bent was scalped for betraying his friends. Korea's last empress was murdered by Japanese assassins. Korea's last empress was murdered by Japanese assassins. Poisoned yogurt took out Emperor Wong Su. Poisoned yogurt took out Emperor Wong Su. Anton Cermak took a bullet for FDR. Anton Cermak took a bullet for FDR. KKK murdered a senator to intimidate white politicians who supported civil rights. The KKK murdered a senator to intimidate white politicians who supported civil rights. The bullet didn't kill President Garfield, his doctors did. James Garfield was elected president of the United States in 1880, but only months after being sworn in, Garfield died from an assassin's bullet. His tenure marked the second shortest presidency in U.S. history, and his assassination has been largely forgotten. Garfield almost wasn't president at all. At the 1880 Republican Presidential Convention, it took 36 ballots to choose a nominee. Garfield was a dark horse choice, and he won the general election by less than 10,000 popular votes. If he hadn't been elected, Garfield almost certainly would have lived. Garfield had only been in office for four months when a disgruntled attorney fired a shot at the president. The assassin, Charles Gaitan, had not been given a political appointment by Garfield and preferred his vice president, Chester A. Arthur. Garfield was hit. Gaitan yelled, Arthur is president now, but Garfield didn't die right away. Instead, 
Doctors stuck their fingers into his wound multiple times in their search for the bullet. Alexander Graham Bell even tried using his new invention, a metal detector, to locate the bullet. Unsurprisingly, infection set in. Garfield wasted away, losing 80 pounds in three months. When he finally died, his assassin quipped, Who the doctors killed Garfield? I just shot him. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and likes and comments down below. And also, thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to see you in the next video. Then, take care. Bye.